Good evening, everyone, and everyone uh, via Zoom as well. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. Our first lesson tonight is a reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him a grain offering and a drink offering for the lord your god blow the trumpet in zion sanctify a fast call a solemn assembly gather the people sanctify the congregation assemble the aged gather the children even infants at the breast let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among, among nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Are we dividing at the asterisk? Okay. Um, please read the gradual psalm together, dividing at the asterisk. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. He will not always accuse us. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. For as the heavens are high above the earth, As far as the east is from the west, as a father cares for his children, our second lesson is a reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you not also to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, 
as unknown and yet are well known as dying and see we are alive as punished and yet not killed as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing everything the word of the lord glory of these 40 days we celebrate with songs of praise whom all things were made himself has fasted and has prayed The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, <clears throat> Do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Before we uh, continue, I just noticed something. I don't know if it's the same way in your bulletin as it is in this one here, 
But if you look at page six, in the middle of the page, it says the penitential office for Lent, and it says the invitation. Mm -hmm. And then it jumps right to the sanctus. Well, we got a problem. But we'll remedy that when we get there. So I'm going to suggest anyway that um, you take your prayer books and uh, <clears throat> Turn to page 264 and following. I'm sorry about that. I just noticed that. All the other bulletins today were correct. I saw this little bit of humor and I thought, it would be appropriate enough for tonight. An Irishman walks into a bar and orders three glasses of Guinness, drinking them one at a time. Noticing this odd ritual, the bartender explains that the beer goes flat when poured and informs the man his beer would be much fresher if he ordered one glass at a time. The Irishman explains he began this custom with his two brothers who have moved to America and Australia respectively. This is their way of remembering all the time they spend drinking together. The man becomes a regular at the pub well known for always ordering three beers at once. One day he walks in and orders only two beers. Assuming the worst, a hush falls among other patrons. When the Irishman returns to the bar to order his second round, the bartender quietly offers his condolences. The man looks confused for a moment and then explains, Oh, no, everyone's fine. I gave up beer for Lent. <laughs> In this season that we begin, we're invited to make a real conversion and renewal of our life. And the ways that we are, that are suggested to us, the traditional observances of fasting, prayer, almsgiving, maybe being more conscious of our own uh, failures and sinfulness, and so doing more penance, being reconciled to God. In fasting, we sacrifice our love of self so that we can become free to love God and others. In prayer, we sacrifice our love of time to make time for the love of God. And in almsgiving, we sacrifice our love of stuff to make room for the love of others. By almsgiving, we highlight others by being more, uh, others as being more important than ourselves and give ourselves to them as Jesus gave himself to others. By prayer, we highlight God as being most important in our life, magnifying him, humbling ourselves, thus realizing the distance between God and us and trying to come closer to the Lord. By fasting, we discover our personal self and see who we really are. Cutting, pruning, and discipling ourselves, or excuse me, dis disciplining ourselves will be part of this job. Doing all these three things with joyful heart and mind will prepare us to rise with Jesus. One thing, though, that always has bothered me and that I continue to reflect on is that no matter how many times I have been in, involved in this observance of Lent, on Ash Wednesday in particular, 
it just seems at times to be, well, here I go again. Why is it that after so many times, so many attempts, let's say, at being a better disciple, of following Christ more closely, of being more open to, to praying, to being generous, to even to fast, because, you know, it's not just the 40 days of Lent when those things are appropriate. We can pray all year long, and we ought to. And there are times during the year when certainly we could fast. And also we can be generous all year long. But what is it about this Lent that causes my reflection to be, you know, are we, am I just doing this because I have to do this? Or am I really serious about what this is all about? And I guess what I come down to is saying that these 40 days give me and give to all of us an opportunity to focus on our particular living in Christ at this moment in our life. That it's, it's really a helpful thing that we have this time given to us so that we can maybe take more uh, awareness of what it is that we're supposed to be doing all year long. How we're supposed to be disciples. What it is that continues to stand in our way of being able to love, to give, to forgive, to care. All of those kinds of things that, that seem to you know, crop up that get in the way of being able to love, being able to forgive, whether it's to forgive an offense or to even ask forgiveness for an offense committed. What is, why is it that it becomes so difficult? And why is it, does it seem to me that in my own life that I'm always starting over again? And I guess that's part of the mystery of Lent for me, and perhaps you've had some similar feelings. I don't know. But that we are, we will hear in a few moments what the church says that we ought to be doing during this season of Lent. And we've heard about the praying, the fasting, the almsgiving, acts of penitence, other kinds of things. And all of that is meant to prepare us for that moment when we get to Easter of renewing our baptismal covenant, of professing again those promises and that whole way of life that at baptism we were immersed into and that those who spoke for us were committing us to. You know, at the, either at the great vigil of Easter or on Easter Sunday itself, we have that opportunity to renew that covenant. Having walked this pilgrim journey of Lent, having tried more, let's say, tried a little more with the grace of God to become more aware of who Christ is in my life, of how I'm following Christ, or not following so closely, or how, how my relationship with God has either kind of stagnated, or how it's grown, or how I'm still wondering how God fits into my life and, frankly, how I fit into God's life. But all of these different things that are suggested to us, these Lenten disciplines, 
are truly an invitation to come closer, to ask our Lord for a greater knowledge of Him, of asking our Lord for this grace of a new intimacy with Him, to know more truly His love and to follow Him more closely and to be able by that closeness and that intimacy to become more truly a sign and an instrument of His love and mercy and compassion and forgiveness in my daily life, in our daily life. It's too easy in one sense to start at the beginning of Lent, go through the ritual that we do, maybe, you know, abstain or fast from certain things during this period of time. But to see it as more of an endurance test or seeing it what we can do rather than it being a, a way of opening myself to being more aware of who Christ really is in my life and how I relate to that one who has called me out of darkness into his light, how he has called all of us by virtue of our baptism out of the darkness of sin and suffering and ultimately out of the power of death itself into life with him now and forever. You know, the Orthodox talk about Lent being a time of bright darkness. That there is real hope in the Lenten season. Not just arriving at the end for Easter, but the hope is that we discover that God's love for us, which is constant and ever seeks us, that this love of God calls us to get out of the things that keep us from being fully alive. You know, the first lesson today from the prophet Joel talks about an experience that the people are going through that wasn't totally unusual for them. It's talking about when locusts are descending on them. A locust plague. And the locust plague came once in a while. Other flying insects came once in a while too. And they would come and they'd destroy all the crops. And then they'd fly off somewhere else and do the same thing someplace else. And meanwhile, all the hard work, the difficult land to start with that, you know, that they were working, all of that work was lost. And so what Joel, the prophet, does is to call the people to this awareness that maybe we need to take more seriously this relationship with Yahweh. Not that God decided, I think it's time to ruin their crops again. But that they take that as an opportunity and an invitation to take their faith more seriously. To take... God's call to them, Yahweh's covenant with them in a more serious way. So that calling the fast and, you know, having people lament that what had happened, but also to lament their sins and how their sins are sort of symbolized by that plague of locusts that comes in and ruins everything. And how their choice to go against Yahweh so often was like being overwhelmed by the locust that nothing good ultimately would come of it. Nothing would last. So perhaps for ourselves, we can look at what's going on in our own lives right now. Maybe like a plague of locusts. Maybe it's the loss of, of a loved one or it's the, the, the setbacks in our personal life or our our, our careers, uh, maybe it's what's going on in the life of, of our own kids or grandchildren or what we see happening in the world and the, 
the kind of, of anger that seems to be just below the surface for a lot of people and how there's this kind of general disquiet about how we ought to relate to each other whether we are different or the same and so with all of that can we who believe who profess faith in Jesus Christ who say that we are loved by God and that we want to love God more truly that as we enter this Lenten time that we allow that grace of God to help us see what might be the locust plague that we're dealing with what is the thing that really pulls us away most from God what is it that is burdening us in such a way that we've maybe turned away and this is the opportunity to turn back this is the opportunity to appropriately repent maybe lament the loss lament the the hurt lament whatever it might be but to do it in that sense of bright darkness it's a darkness but there's hope because of the life that Christ holds out to us after all the Lenten journey as I said earlier ends with Easter with new life and new hope and then if we observe Lent well then that will really be more than just repeating words at the great vigil or on Easter day in the renewal of the baptismal covenant but it'll be a true renewal of our faith and our hope and our love and our desire to be the kind of witnesses that Christ calls us to be in a few moments we're going to have the cross of ashes put on our foreheads and it means that we are making a commitment that we are undertaking Lent as a season of dying to ourselves it also describes our human condition it says that we are broken and need repair that we are sinners and need redemption most importantly it tells us that as followers of Jesus Christ we are to carry our crosses it also reminds us that we are dust and ashes mortal human beings carrying and informed by an immortal soul I want to finish with these words by St. John Chrysostom or Chrysostom if you will from who died in the early 400s do you fast give me proof of it by your works if you see a poor person be moved to pity for them if you see an enemy be reconciled to them if you see a friend being honored do not envy them do not let only your mouth fast but also the eye and the ear and the feet and the hands and the members of your body let the hands fast by being free of avarice and greed let the feet fast by ceasing to run after sin let the eyes fast by disciplining them not to glare at that which is sinful let the ear fast by not listening to evil talk and gossip let the mouth fast from foul words and unjust criticism slander calumny and detraction for what good is it if we abstain from food but bite and devour our brothers and sisters so may the Lord in this time of bright darkness fill us with his grace and help us to walk the Lenten journey and to become more fully alive in him step by step as we approach the mystery and greatness of Easter <clears throat> okay. thank you 
in your prayer books on page um, 264 at the bottom. Dear people of God, the Christ, first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you then, in, therefore, in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and pen repentance, <clears throat> excuse me, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. <clears throat> excuse me. And to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. <clears throat> Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your loving kindness, in your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only I have sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Remember, Create in me a clean dust, heart, O God, and, and renew dust, a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not Remember, your Holy Spirit dust, from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain <clears> me with your bountiful spirit. Remember, I shall teach your dust, ways to the wicked and, and the sinner shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Remember Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, 
a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. On page 267, the first paragraph. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. by the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Unite us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <clears throat> peace one and all. This is to Joel. <clears throat> from 7 or 9.30 from the Eucharist for this morning. I will. Yeah. And then bring me <laughs> one because I need the preface. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Maybe I should just dump them. <laughs> Remember that you are dust. And to dust you shall return. Just one announcement that if you have an offering that you'd like to leave for this Ash Wednesday, there's a basin in the back on the table um, which you can 
leave it in. <clears throat> We're missing a few other pieces of things, so. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You refresh us with bodily food, but also with food for the Spirit. You desire us to live not by bread alone, but by the nourishment of your every word. In this way, both by eating and by fasting, we are sustained and fed. As you strengthen the body with food and drink, so through abstinence and the works of love, you strengthen and renew the, and renew the soul. You have consecrated this Lent for us to bring us health of mind and body and to turn us again to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated. <clears throat> Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, 
for Christ in whom the world is reconciled. Lifted on the cross, his suffering and forgiveness spanned the gulf our sins had made. <clears throat> Through that dark struggle, death was swallowed up in victory, that life and light might reign. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which the sons of Egypt died, your chosen one, himself the firstborn, freely offered his life. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup, he offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for many that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, St. Margaret of Cortona, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
grant us peace. <clears throat> For those via Zoom who cannot receive communion in person, in union, blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world, gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Just a reminder to those who may not uh, be familiar with our custom here. If you wish to receive Holy Communion from the little communion cup that has the host in the bottom and the wine in the top, we ask you to come forward to communion and just put out one hand and I'll say the body and blood of Christ to you, and you can respond, Amen. And then if you're on this side of the church, just step that way and turn it over and receive the body of Christ and turn it over again, the blood of Christ, and drop the empty containers uh, into the little whisk wicker baskets lined with aluminum foil. If you wish to receive uh, the body of Christ, the host, please put your hands like you normally would and I'll place it in your hand. And if you wish to receive from the chalice, Heather will be standing in front of the lectern with the chalice. Or a blessing, if you wish.
the prayer after Holy Communion on page 10 of the bulletin. Let us pray. Merciful God, be our strength and sustenance in the sacrament we share, so that as we fast, we may be filled with the gentleness of your healing love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Behold your church Walking once more The pilgrim way of Lent Led by your cloud By day, by night your fire Moved by your love And Toward your presence bent, far off yet hear the goal of all desire. So daily dying to the way of self, so daily to your way of love. We walk the road, Lord Jesus, that you trod, knowing ourselves baptized into your death. So we are dead and live with in God. If dead in you, so in you we arise. You, the firstborn of all the faithful dead. And as through stony Round the green shoots break, glorious in springtime, dress of leaf and flower, so in the Father's glory shall we. Let us bless the Lord. 